lot of times we'll do a mini lesson that's more notes based or you know just kind of more traditional and then we'll do a station rotation or an activity where they're up and moving around um, where they're talking with their peers uh, so I try to kind of, kind of um, evaluate as I go about what they need if they're seeming like they're kind of bored I'll kind of mix it up um, they tell me I'm corny all the time so however corny I need to be uh, to get them active and engaged in what they're doing I'll, I'll do what it takes a lot of times the way that I design lessons and the way that Ashley and I design our units is thematically based. So we try to incorporate a lot of um, contemporary young adult literature. Uh, we apply the, the concepts that are in the standards like theme, point of view, all that stuff with, um, with texts that are more applicable to themselves. So they see, uh, I keep going back to theme, but it's just the easiest one for me to go to. Uh, they see the themes that are happening in these contemporary stories with characters who look like them um, and so they're able to understand that recognizing the same story that happens in this fiction thing, this fiction text, really is applicable to their lives as well. Um, they've also told me that they can take a lot of the ideas that we learn and talk about in my class and apply them to their other classes as well. So they see the transfer of knowledge from their English class to their social studies class to their um, African American history class to their math class. is one of our new teachers who has proven to be a valuable asset. Um, instructionally, she um, works well with our kids with the guided reading. She's very creative and the task that she gives our students and she's always willing to go the extra mile. She tutors our students after school and not only that, she follows through with parents with conversations that are needed, even they can be, even they may be some difficult conversations. If a student is behind, I actually have um, helpers in the room as well that will pull that student aside and get them caught up. If they're behind because they missed a day of school, um, they can pull them aside and review with them what they did the day before. I also have helpers as in students. So I have some of my students, I call them my TAs, preparing them for college. Can you be a teacher's assistant? And if they um, are able to help teach them, it actually confirms that they know what they're doing. Um, Another way as well, if a large group of kids was on a field trip, we do small group instruction while there's independent practice going on. It's expected that they know the procedure since day one. Um, the schedule's been the same. Um, what we do, we start with independent reading, we go into a lesson, um, we do independent practice, small group, whole group. Um, but my expectation is that they just try. They know where they, they are at on their benchmark scores, they know where they're at in their writing. Um, and that they know where they want to be. So coming in, it doesn't matter where you are. It matters that you get to where your goal is. Um, so my kids strive so for that Today was day. a little bit easier. Which one do you like better? What we did yesterday or what we did today? Today. 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 Yes, ma'am. I'm coming. Well, instructional practices are pretty much everything but my kitchen sink because everybody's highly individualized in here. So just because I'm teaching let's say I'm teaching about Earth Day and I've got activities all scheduled around Earth Day. Student A needs something totally different from student B who again needs something totally different from student C. So I use pretty much all my instructional practices are very varied. Um, they're, they're very different for everybody. They, um, they have to reflect what the student knows to begin with and how the student learns best. Um, this morning, what we're doing this morning for example, some of my students picked it up right away and I didn't have to do it letter by letter for them every time. Once they got the idea of, of taking out the letters and putting in the apostrophe, then they just went with the flow. Some of them I had to do it step by step every time. So a lot of it, I, I do a lot of hands on. I use a lot of visuals, a lot of visuals. And um, I use my technology whenever I can. And if the technology is appropriate, then I use it because they respond very well to technology. The only way I can prove how my students move uh, through the year, I use, um, teacher made assessments. Um, for example, this morning with the contraction lesson, next week, we'll keep working on that this week and next week and then next Friday, I will do a little run through and I'll have them spell out the contractions with the use, correct use of the apostrophe on their trays. And that will be my assessment of who knows how well to build their contractions. So I do the same thing um, with their writing. I have a 
a journal that they've been keeping since the beginning of the year, and I can look at that and I can chart their progress. Now they can use capital letters, now they use the correct spacing, now they can put their um, periods and their uh, punctuation marks in, stuff that they couldn't do at the beginning of the year. So all my assessment, other than the state testing, is, is authentic assessment.